Да, я надеюсь. I hope. Mm -hmm. так, все. Что, запускать меня пока? Это, да, да? Ну, вы сказали, Николай Иванович? Да, 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 вы сказали. Николай Иванович, давай. Да нет, а, Николай, он не слышал. Нет, нет, я слышу. Я... Можно Здесь экран? Видеть, yes. The first talk of our session is a report of by Vladislav Topolev and great collective, yes? Yes. Oh. Please, <laughs> orphan discovery by master OACA. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I will talk about uh, orphan discovery by Master Wap. Uh, first of all, uh, oh, just give me a second. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention uh, the list of uh, all observatory and uh, institutes uh, participating in master project. Uh, on the slide, uh, you can see. Um, at 4 May uh, 2021, the Tsuki Transient Facility uh, detected an unusual uh, optical transient, AT, uh, named AT2021 uh, uh, LFA, uh, and get two images uh, in red filter and two hours later at green filter. Uh, with no detection, two days earlier, uh, hmm, sorry, sorry, I'm going to say it already. Uh, and Tsuiki uh, have image uh, this place uh, only two days ago. And uh, on this image, uh, this place uh, was empty. Um, but Three hours before the day of detection, uh, during the usual Master Global Robotic Net uh, Sky Survey, uh, Master Alpha uh, can detect a new optical transient uh, and obtain six unfiltered frames of this transient. Uh, on this slide, uh, in the upper, uh, on the upper right uh, panel, you can see uh, the first discovery image of this optical transient, and uh, under this image, uh, the reference image uh, of this place uh, with uh, uh, 21 magnitude limit. Uh, also, on the slide, on this slide, uh, you can see uh, optical curve uh, of this transient, uh, where red dot. Uh, is a master of observation. Uh, red dot uh, master of uh, observation. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yellow dot uh, ZTF observation and in RG filters uh, and to and other observation uh, of this uh, optical transient. Uh, and what we can see, uh, this light curve uh, firstly show non-monotonic uh, non-monotonic non behavior and uh, also we can see that master of uh, dots uh, just располагается ниже. Master of dots uh, with the significance uh, uh, of seven sigma uh, show uh, less flux uh, than ZF observation uh, after three three hours uh, ago. After three hours, um, also. 
um, further observation of this object uh, revealed uh, on this place the host galaxy uh, with uh, z uh, equals uh, near one and uh, r less than mm, incorrect r more than uh, 23 uh, and uh, also this obstacle transient uh, have fast fading more than one magnitude per day uh, and uh, red color all of this uh, all of these properties uh, uh, hint us that this uh, object uh, are is Jerbe afterglow or like Jerbe afterglow uh, but we don't detect uh, we don't detect JRB uh, gamma ray burst uh, and why this happened we try to explain uh, in this take the plot we try we try to explain uh, uh, non monotonic uh, smooth shape of light curve. Uh, we try to uh, explain uh, in frame the model of smooth optical self similar emission. Uh, this model, uh, this model first, uh, it, it, it first. First, first proposed uh, in uh, 2017 uh, by Lipunov et al. Uh, and this model uh, described uh, light curve of afterglow of gamma ray burst with this equation. Uh, this equation has uh, three parameters, uh, max flux, uh, al Yes. Alpha and beta, and beta uh, where alpha and beta uh, parameters we gain from observation many other source emission source emission gamma ray bursts. Can I ask you in your show that some picture? Can you explain what we see at this picture? Where is the discovery of transit? Um, what is in, uh, in this picture, we can see uh, many observations made by masters. In what coordinate? Uh, on this picture, uh, stellar magnitude and uh, time. Uh, you... What? Right. Yes. See. Uh, if uh, if we try uh, to go to parameter tau, uh, we can this image of previous graph. Uh, and if we uh, re reduce the maximum magnitude, uh, we can obtain a univer universal. Uh, light curve for source emission like gamma ray burst and uh, red dot uh, show uh, our optical transient uh, 80 2021 LFA uh, using uh, alpha equals uh, 1.2 and beta equals near uh, E Euler constant uh, uh, we we can uh, fit in uh, 802021 LFA and obtain uh, three main parameters of this light curve: explosion time, uh, peak time, uh, and peak magnitude. Uh, 
in this slide you can see all of these parameters. Uh, there are uh, in estimation of explosion time uh, less than uh, 15 minutes. And uh, when we and when we uh, estimate the uh, explosion time, uh, we try uh, to search uh, in in this time. Uh, maybe maybe we can see weak uh, gamma flash uh, in gamma, gamma ray uh, observatory, uh, which. Uh, which uh, some reasons uh, do, don't uh, don't trigger automatically in these instruments. Uh, we search uh, for associated uh, gamma ray bursts uh, in the so-called IPN interplanetary network, uh, which consists from eight instruments and uh, the most sensitive instrument of IPN uh, are SWIFT, BAT, uh, Fermi GBM, Integral, and Conus Wind. Uh, on this table, we can see uh, detailed ana analysis for each instrument of IPN, of no, most sensitive IPN instruments. Uh, and uh, after all, all, all analysis, uh, we obtained that uh, near the estimation of the trigger, uh, we, uh, mm, all of these instruments uh, didn't see uh, any object. And also we derived upper limit on the peak flux or in gamma ray uh, of three times to the power of 10 minus seven to the power of 10. Uh, we try uh, to explain uh, the absence of gamma ray burst uh, in frame of model uh, orphan afterglows. Uh, the, the orphan afterglows uh, currently uh, predicts by three uh, different models. First, uh, on axis orphan GRB, uh, second, off axis of orphan GRB, and so-called uh, failed GRB or uh, dirty fireball. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, on axis GRB, uh, it uh, is a typical GRB, uh, but uh, in no, absorbed in initial uh, open angle, opening angle, but uh, with some reason. Uh, with uh, no corresponding gamma ray burst because uh, gam uh, gamma radiation more collimated or may uh, or may from complex structure of jet uh, how how we can see uh, on previous slide. Uh, off axis. Uh, Orphan GRBs. Uh, jet is observed outside from initial angle. Uh, we we also uh, outside of initial angle because the uh, uh, angle of visibility of jet uh, grow with time. And uh, if uh, in initial time in initial time we can't observe the jet and gamma ray burst uh, with uh, one day more in, or two day uh, the angle can uh, cover the earth and 
we can observe afterglow. Uh, and uh, third model, failed, failed uh, gamma ray burst, uh, happened when uh, environment uh, have uh, very high bryonic uh, pollution, high, high bryonic uh, pollution, uh, and uh, be and because uh, and because hyperonic pollution uh, in jet uh, initial Lorentz factor uh, is is very low, uh, much less than 100, uh, and gamma ray uh, radiation uh, also is low. Uh, on on picture you can see uh, uh, on 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 left picture uh, you can see uh, typical uh, orphans uh, afterglow uh, on axis uh, this point is jet break uh, off axis afterglow for two uh, open angle. Uh, mm, Equation for uh, uh, open angle you, you can see here, uh, and uh, on the right panel you can see uh, compression of uh, off axis and failure bits. Uh, on this slide you can see uh, some uh, light curve uh, obtained by computing modeling of. Uh, of axis uh, GRB for different uh, jets model, profiles jet model. Uh, and if we uh, use this for uh, our observation, we obtain this picture. Uh, and what we can see, uh, if we uh, chose uh, different uh, of axis model, we obtained absolutely different results. Uh, results of uh, computer simulating uh, of axis uh, observation uh, con contradictory from different afters. Uh, and because of it, uh, we can't deny or or prove uh, the possibility of an off axis origin. And also, we know that uh, source emission, which, correspond, which corresponds uh, before with on axis gamma ray bursts, because, uh, because uh, for all of source gamma ray bursts, we see. Uh, gamma radiation. Uh, it means that they be on axis. On axis, no, but no orphan. Uh, those uh, our, our optical transients uh, not uh, yeah. Uh, those uh, our, our optical transients uh, probably not orphan uh, and more more likely uh, on axis or failed because failed uh, gamma ray burst uh, have light curve uh, near on axis like on on axis gamma ray burst. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, some an analytic uh, equation uh, and estimation of uh, initial Lorentz factor uh, of uh, this burst for uh, constant interstellar medium uh, and for stellar wind. Uh, both uh, both estimation 
uh, in, in both estimation, where in both estimation, in both estimation, we obtain a uh, very low Lorentz, uh, very low uh, initial Lorentz factor uh, near 20 and uh, near 10 for uh, for typical uh, gamma ray burst uh, parameter. Uh, also, we use the uh, correlation obtained by uh, in the Elan, uh correlation between uh, optical peak, uh, optical optical peak time, uh, gamma isotropic uh, isotropic gamma fluence, and initial Lorentz factor, uh, and use this correlation. Uh, we also obtain a low Lorentz factor, low initial Lorentz factor, uh, which uh, which correspond uh, with uh, our an analytic. In, in, uh, in, in accord, uh, we, we in accordance uh, with uh, our uh, analytic estimation. Uh, all, all, all of this, uh, our AP 2021 uh, LFA is a good candidate for failed GRB or dirty summary burst. Uh, and summarize. Uh, first, uh, firstly, uh, we sh we have shown that uh, AT2021 LFA uh, is a good candidate for orphan GRB. Uh, secondly, uh, this uh, orphan GRB uh, can be explained with the dirty fireball model. And uh, also, uh, we can't uh, exclude off axis uh, origin of this burst. And thirdly, uh, if we use, if we uh, assume uh, source emission model for this uh, gamma ray burst, we can uh, obtain estimation, the estimation for the moment of time. Uh, the, the can estimation the moment of the explosion. So. Hmm? This is all. Thank you. The questions, please. Please, please. <laughs> An interesting, an interesting report, but can you turn back to the source chapter about GRB examples? There are examples. Oh, uh, this. This is like uh, a bright yellow GRB. Are you sure it has negative 21 at the beginning of, the, of observations? Um. What, 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 what problems? <laughs> because the GRB is not our. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I answer. I answer. Uh, on, on this on this graph, uh, we have points. Uh, no, not a uh, Not not all, all points belong to master observation. In this graph, uh, uh, we have some points of other instruments. Uh, for example, AT2021 uh, LFA uh, have, uh, have points for one, two, three, five, or six other instruments. And uh, for uh, and for other source like gamma ray burst, uh, we also have points of other instruments, 
not only master's observations. Thank you. I have the one question. Uh, in, our, in your model, uh, you have two parameters, alpha and beta, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, this value is a value for one GRB, but maybe for many. Um, average or only for one? Uh, alpha, uh, alpha and beta uh, obtained for all of source like ah. GRBs. Uh, it's and you, you, well, yes, on this and, graph, uh, uh, you also uh, uh, say that the, that uh, we have uh, additional parameter, the angle theta. Yes. Mm, yes. Yes. And uh, how this parameter theta uh, is connected with alpha beta? No. Uh, in in source model, uh, in sim simple source model, uh, we uh, Assume that we see directly in that and uh, that uh, yes the e has migrated from, from the yeah. on axis yeah. uh, observation mm -hmm. yes who is the author of this model if f is equal if max This uh, empirical model or uh, some theoretical? Yes, this empirical, but uh, on the right picture, uh, explain this power law physical uh, formula, which you see. What does it mean, physical sense of this? No, left, left more important because right left. Uh, Nikolai Ivanovich knows how to sell similar models. Left, uh, what, 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 why is this non monotonic? Uh, you can explain. Fireball explosion in the uh, uh, in envir environment. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, Why you can explain? Why can't you explain? Why can't you can ah, so, uh -huh. so, I un understand. Uh, на английском сложно. Ну, у нас, получается, есть вот эжектируемый материал какой-то, ну, там, пошла вспышка, он набирает материалы еще, ну, из окружающей среды. Как бы площадь этого конуса, она как раз квадратично растет, поэтому, ну, в этого материала, который набирает с расстоянием. Если мы считаем, что постоянная скорость, то и получается, что квадратично будет поток okay. расти. Окей, okay. thank you. Ну, Хорошо, you площадь вот эта. Хорошо, площадь. Женя? Хорошо. А, thank you. Спасибо. Хлопаем. The next report by Bogomolov, Svertilov, Yashin et al. Lomonosov, GRB, Sochi. That's normal. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yes. I don't want to do that. Where is mine? We didn't throw it away. I don't see it. Да, вот в этом. А вот не вижу. Нет, нет. Так нет, с моей. Это не та, что ли? Да, куда сбрасывать, туда сбрасывать. Я могу самое большее сбросить еще раз куда-нибудь. А как ваша называлась? Ломоносов, ГРБ, Сёч. Это сейчас. 
Возьмем. Возьмем сейчас. При мне загружали, неважно. Так. Сейчас она, сейчас она откроется. Вот. Так. Это неправильный подход. Вот она. Да. Вы промахнулись в соседней. Да, сейчас скопируйте только, чтобы он сюда... Сейчас. Скопировали или нет? Или пока я скопировал? И туда же, где было. Где было? Вот, вот сюда, да? Это? Там, да. Флешку. да, флешку внимаем, вставляем, что надо. Я пусть он... Окей, я представляю... Всем видно, все слышно, да? Yeah. Uh, Трансляция есть, да? Uh -huh. I present the report of uh, Skobitsyn Institute of uh, Nuclear Physics of Moscow State uh, Novo University group. Uh, it uh, is about the gamma ray burst search in uh, Lomonosov space mission. First about the uh, Lomonosov uh, space mission. Parameter uh, of orbit are here in the slide. Uh, it is a low uh, near Earth uh, orbit, uh, polar. Altitude of uh, 500 kilometers and the launch date uh, 28th of April uh, 2016. Uh, it is uh, the first launch uh, from the Cosmodrome Vostochny. Complex of instruments uh, includes uh, three instruments uh, dealt with uh, gamma ray burst uh, detection. They are marked uh, with uh, red. Uh, first is uh, BDRG gamma ray spectrometer, scintillator spectrometer. Uh, Main results of uh, my report will be with this instrument. Also, uh, wide field of view optical chamber uh, shock and uh, Korean uh, coding mask X-ray telescope UFO. Here is uh, the parameters of uh, BDRG gamma ray spectrometer. In this uh, picture, you can see uh, the location of uh, our blocks uh, schematically. These are three similar detector boxes shifted for 90 degrees from each other. Energy range is from 10 kiloelectronvolts to 3 megaelectronvolts. Here is the scheme of one detector unit. It consists of two scintillators. The thin sodium iodide scintillator with thickness 3 millimeters, and behind it the cesium iodide scintillator of um, 17 uh, millimeters uh, that is uh, served uh, also as an active shield uh, from uh, gamma rays uh, detected behind from the direction behind the satellite. So this way uh, allows uh, to estimate the direction of uh, gamma ray bursts and uh, in the future uh, in part of my report I will uh, show our opportunities in this way. The monitoring data cover the energy range for sodium iodide uh, from 10 kiloelectronvolts to 650 kiloelectronvolts and uh, from uh, cesium iodide from 50 to kiloelectronvolts to uh, about 3 megaelectronvolts. The data types are Besides monitoring uh, with uh, rather high time resolution, uh, one second, uh, one tenth of second, uh, have uh, other uh, kinds of uh, information. Spectrum with uh, more than 700 channels and uh, so named event mode. Uh, it uh, is uh, the information about. Uh, each interaction uh, particle uh, in uh, the scintillator with a microsecond uh, time resolution and uh, uh, the parameters of pulse shape that allow to restore uh, light curves with a microsecond time resolution and uh, good energy spectrum. Mm -hmm. 
in uh, the below table uh, you can see the parameters of uh, our instrument uh, let us stress about uh, the angular resolution of course it is in uh, the best situation when the bright uh, gamma ray burst uh, was in is in the field of view of all detectors so the accuracy of uh, localization of such a uh, burst is uh, several degrees of course uh, the gamma ray burst uh, search uh, is uh, connected with uh, trigger information that uh, allows to get uh, more complicated and uh, more accurate information. Uh, several time scales for triggering are dependent on uh, the studied phenomena. The so named fast uh, trigger uh, with character times uh, about uh, several uh, milliseconds uh, corresponds to terrestrial gamma flashes and ultra short gamma ray bursts. The typical gamma ray burst uh, correspond to a second interval of a trigger uh, named slow and uh, super slow um, trigger uh, of several tenths of a second uh, interval uh, corresponds to solar flares, uh, some magnetospheric phenomena, and a very high uh, uh, duration uh, gamma ray bursts. We have two levels of triggers. Uh, one is internal trigger uh, that uh, lets uh, our instrument, only our instrument, be the uh, date fixation with uh, more accuracy. And uh, alert trigger uh, triggers uh, the other instruments, including a uh, wide field of view optical chambers and uh, forms uh, messages via global star modem. In this figure, you can see location of uh, what will uh, view optical uh, chambers uh, shock. They were placed uh, to the field of view of uh, BDRG detectors in order to um, avoid uh, the direction of uh, instrument toward the source of uh, the gamma ray burst uh, because uh, it is uh, always in the field of view of detector. Of course, it is not uh, so good uh, uh, space uh, resolution, but uh, it is a wide field of view. You see uh, here the parameters of shock optical chambers. Uh, field of view is uh, 20 degrees by uh, 40 degrees. Sensitivity is about 10 uh, stellar magnitude. Uh, now in this uh, table you see uh, the list of uh, GRBs uh, detected uh, in the experiment with uh, BDRG detector uh, from the time of the observation since May uh, 2016 to January 2017 uh, as well as uh, not listed in this uh, table uh, we detected uh, 14 uh, outburst from uh, the well-known uh, for this period uh, soft gamma repeater uh, these uh, 14 events include also three events that were not detected uh, by other instruments and for these uh, 20 grbs uh, see this in this uh, column uh, the duration of uh, each of them correspond to long uh, gamma ray burst or uh, they are not events shorter than two seconds uh, for most bright events uh, we obtained parameters of spectra with a cutoff power low model uh, here the parameter and most of the events uh, corresponded to bdrg uh, instrument triggers so uh, the millisecond and uh, even microsecond uh, time resolution is uh, available for these events uh, most of the events were uh, have uh, circulars uh, in gcn here is uh, the examples of our light curves of our events uh, all of this uh, catalog was published in the journal universe in uh, 2021 uh, this is the reference you see that uh, uh, the light curves uh, are 
of a very uh, interesting variations. Uh, a lot of uh, pulses. Uh, here is the other six uh, elements and other six elements. And two gamma ray bursts the among our events are of uh, the most interest uh, because of uh, multi wave length observation occurred. Uh, produced uh, with a uh, master uh, robotic telescope. They were already reported uh, in the reports of the uh, master group uh, yesterday. One of them is uh, GRB 1610-17A uh, with, uh, in uh, the left uh, panel, uh, you see the data of a light curve uh, measured by uh, BDRG. The bottom uh, graph uh, shows uh, the time resolution uh, of like uh, 10 uh, milliseconds, uh, some structure. And uh, the most interesting is uh, that uh, more than uh, 100 seconds after the main pause, uh, you see also the Another episode, uh, and uh, it was obtained, light curve obtained uh, in uh, gamma rays by BDRG and other experiment. And in the same time, uh, the optical prompt emission uh, also was observed uh, by uh, master robotic telescopes. It was reported and it was published in Astrophysical Journal. Uh, here is the reference. Another gamma ray burst uh, is uh, GRB 1606-25B. It is uh, uh, reported, uh, reports are connected with uh, measured uh, by master group, uh, measured polarization of uh, in optical emission on this uh, event. As for data of uh, BDRG, uh, this is not uh, good data during the first main uh, pulse because of the satellite uh, locating near the, near the radiation belts uh, and uh, magnetic anomaly. And we uh, measured only during, made measurements only during this episode. Uh, and uh, because we know location of the source of a gamma ray burst on the sky, we made the regression and uh, produced uh, our light curve. You see uh, the light curve in good uh, agreement with the data of Fermi. So we show even uh, some more small uh, parts of a light curve uh, are sustainable. And, uh, now about uh, statistics of our bursts, uh, we analyzed uh, the GCN information during the, uh, our observation period and uh, showed that uh, our condition of observation correspond to that we see. The detected uh, events uh, are about 20% uh, of all events occurred at uh, this time. The summer bursts were out of field of view. For some bursts, we have no data. And of course, uh, some bursts uh, uh, occurred uh, where the satellites crossed the radiation belts. And uh, now about uh, the interesting methodological uh, work uh, that uh, can be made in Lamanoso uh, data, because uh, if uh, to provide uh, multi-wavelength uh, measurements uh, with optical uh, telescopes, uh, one must uh, give uh, information about the coordinates of uh, the gamma ray burst. And uh, our situation is not so good as uh, in the experiment of uh, Fermi GB GBM, with a lot of uh, blocks directed towards the all uh, parts of the sky. We have only three detectors. And uh, in the best situation, when uh, the gamma ray burst eliminates so well uh, all the three detectors uh, and the burst is enough bright, we can use uh, the simple formula assuming that uh, the 
relation between uh, count rates uh, depends only on the direction of uh, bursts and uh, this uh, cosine uh, diagram of a view. But uh, only a few of uh, our bursts uh, have uh, the following situation. So we have to take into account uh, that some detection uh, must uh, be illuminated uh, with the angles about uh, 90 degrees or even more than 90 degrees and uh, so we must uh, add to the part uh, to the front part of the detector we must add uh, the side part of the detector of course from behind we uh, cannot uh, see in sodium iodide we cannot see any uh, emission if gamma ray bursts uh, occurred from behind and uh, our approach is uh, the following we can take uh, the tested uh, part of a sky uh, and uh, estimate the uh, effective areas from this sky because we know directions of all our blocks. And uh, in uh, this assumption, uh, we uh, can uh, estimate the uh, relation between uh, count rates uh, of detectors, of course, with uh, statistical uh, errors. Uh, and uh, then uh, testing all uh, parts of uh, sky, we can uh, obtain area from which uh, the following uh, relation between uh, count rates uh, can be uh, expected. Here is the list of uh, gamma ray bursts uh, with the uh, name uh, of uh, other missions uh, that uh, were also detected these bursts. Some of them, 16, uh, mission, 16 uh, events uh, among our 20 events are well localized by a swift uh, conus wind triangulation, optical uh, measurements, uh, including master, Fermi uh, GBM, etc. Yeah, so we can use these bursts uh, for methodical analysis. And four of uh, our bursts were detected also by some other experiments, but uh, we did not find in GCN any uh, data about their localization on the sky. This is not a very bright event, but uh, these are not present uh, in the GCN uh, about information about the localization. Let us uh, see our opportunities. Uh, let us start with the 19th uh, gamma ray burst uh, it, in this uh, list. Uh, it was uh, occurred, it occurred uh, 1st of January 17. Uh, it uh, is well illuminated by all three detectors. It is uh, bright. You see light curves uh, obtained by uh, three detectors. 50 degrees, uh, 70 degrees, 48 degrees. Uh, and uh, in this uh, sky map, you see uh, the cross uh, shows uh, the localization uh, made by SWIFT, and this uh, area is localized. I show it uh, is a localization of uh, our, this burst by made only by BDRG. You see good correspondence and, and you see uh, that uh, in the best situation we can localize the uh, source of gamma ray burst uh, in the accuracy of uh, several degrees. If uh, it is not so good situation, uh, some detectors have angles uh, close to 90 degrees, you see uh, the not good uh, array but uh, also relatively suitable. Uh, it is uh, explained by the weaker gamma ray burst and uh, the statistical errors uh, more than three sigma, of course, uh, are not so good. Another event when the weak gamma ray burst, only uh, three, uh, only 30 pulses uh, in one detector, in another detector, you can uh, see maybe uh, increase maybe not increase and the uh, third detector you cannot see any increase you uh, see that uh, some uh, information about location uh, can be obtained but it is uh, very rough mm -hmm. 
Another situation when one block did not work, another is out of field of view. You see uh, that uh, it is better than nothing, but uh, not uh, better. And uh, last uh, slide uh, is information about uh, the gamma ray burst did not uh, present uh, information from which are not presented in GCN. This uh, gamma ray burst uh, has a bad situation where one block uh, worked and another two blocks did not work, half of a sky. Almost the same uh, situation is from this uh, work. Uh, one uh, block did not work. Another block uh, worked, but we did not see a light curve of a burst. And uh, the, uh, of the burst was detected only by uh, one uh, detector. Another two, uh, the last uh, two gamma ray bursts uh, were detected uh, with areas, uh, they localized with the fallen areas. This is a rather big area, of course, uh, it is all that we can give. Because, uh, of course, uh, the bright uh, bursts were not uh, presented uh, without uh, GCN information of localization. Brief summary uh, of uh, vision, and uh, thank you for the attention. In summary, I uh, in summary, I stress on uh, that uh, fact that no triggering GRB sources appears in the field of view of uh, on board optical chamber shocks. Some uh, triggers were made, but uh, the optical telescope uh, uh, field of view was uh, did not contain uh, the gamma ray burst. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the question, Tash. Скажите, пожалуйста, если сравнивать вашу чувствительность с конус виндом. I can ask. I can answer. The conus wind uh, sensitivity of uh, light curve obtaining or of uh, triangulation data of location. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, there are different background conditions, so our sensitivity is uh, rather good, but uh, it depends strongly on the background conditions. I think that uh, and uh, conus wind. I, uh, Maybe it's better to answer for this uh, group, but uh, directions of uh, instruments uh, play some roles in this. Mm -hmm. I wonder, uh, did you use uh, the earth blocking to constrain your locations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a very good question. Uh, we did not uh, make it yet, but we planned to make it. But uh, it uh, did not. It uh, may not give uh, a lot of uh, additional information. Of course, uh, if we have uh, the following uh, situation, uh, maybe uh, screening of uh, this uh, block of uh, by the Earth gave uh, some. Uh, decreasing of uh, the area of course but we did not uh, make it yet another small question in case of a single block detection uh, is, is this area similar to the situation when you just take a half of sky which is in the zenith of the space mm -hmm. yes it is uh, similar to the situation in for this black uh, for this uh, gamma ray burst Unfortunately, only one detector worked. Another addition. Uh, uh, so we usually do not triangulate weak bursts because it's, it's not usually interesting. Mm -hmm. We can do it uh, for, for particular bursts if you need a um, mm -hmm. uh, great organization. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh -huh. More questions? 
Where did you order or bought this year? I mean, electronics, main components. It's a national production or you ordered somewhere from a famous company. Mm -hmm. I mean. Mm -hmm. The experiment uh, was made uh, in the uh, 16th uh, year. And uh, now the situation uh, changes. Uh, maybe my brother will uh, comment uh, this. Because it deals with electronics and with... It was launched in uh, 16, but uh, the instrument was designed and produced several years before. Really. But we, in Russia, in Russia. In Russia. It, it was an uh, instrument produced here in uh, uh, Moscow uh, University. Yeah, this yeah. And uh, the some uh, sensitive part of the where you find sensitive parts? Is from Russia or from our? Yes, we find from Russia. We find from. No. It is uh, the question for the future experiments, and maybe at when the morning reports uh, made by Svirtilov and Ayudin, maybe some uh, we discussed some uh, aspects of this problem. No, not uh, they take. Uh, we have some uh, scintillations from Soviet epoch. We used, uh, but, but no, for BDRG, we really take uh, from the uh, Institute of Minerals. They made uh, it in Moscow. And uh, then I uh, want to say that uh, the short uh, time of the experiment uh, that uh, ended uh, in January 19, uh, 2017 is not connected with the work of uh, the instrument. It is with other problems. Hmm? Thank you. Aknyansky? Online. Yes, I'm here. Oh. Sure. Okay. Oh. Victor, please. AGN observation with master. Yes. I'm uh, here today. Presentation, sorry. Yeah, can I start? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Are you hear me? Yes, uh, I hear you. It's okay. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, Victor, we hear you. We can hear. Oh, yeah. Victor. Yeah. Do you hear me? Да. Слышно меня? Да, да, мы слышим. Я сижу Hi everybody. I'm here today to talk about uh, changing look AGNs and uh, our results connected with this object and uh, about contribution of master observation in investigation of these uh, interesting objects. Uh, the first object is NGC 1566, and we have uh, several uh, good publication in good journal about this, and, and a big team was working uh, 
in this subject, including South African uh, team, uh, second call from Finland, and uh, master teams is most significant. And another object is, uh, and you see, and. 2617. They also have several publications, and one is preparing for submitting to Menras. Here is a uh, tenth of, of uh, collaborators, so I show here the names of uh, some of them. And, uh, and would like to say thanks to all of them for, for help, for their work. And the structure of my talk is the following. First of all, what is the uh, AGN and AGN types? And what is changing look at GM? And we'll be call it like changing look at uh, CL at GM. And first of all, I would like to say about the, my lovely object NGC 4151 as a typical AGN and typical changing look at GM. And uh, about changing look at GM monitoring project. And then in detail about our results of, on these two uh, changing look at GMs. And then I will try to to collect the common properties of this uh, changeable on the base of uh, our research, not only this object but some others. And uh, maybe it's one of the first efforts is in this direction to get uh, common properties which help to can help to understand the, the nature of this object and and get uh, finally get the good model for this uh, interesting uh, objects. I would like to show you this uh, very popular picture. It was shown several times here. Uh, for what? Uh, uh, when we look on the, uh, this picture, first of all, we see some order. And the goal of the science is to make some order in, in the house, in the universe. And uh, this order, in, in this case, is connected with the location of the observer. And you see that some galaxies are uh, bended by gravitational lensing and some not because uh, some of them are further uh, than lens and some of them uh, closer to us. And for any case, it's connected with orientation to the observer. And uh, the same idea was uh, used for AGN when when the people was trying to have some good model for for explanation of different uh, type of AGNs. Uh, first idea was uh, about about the significance of orientation to the observer. The, this idea was appearing in the 80s, uh, past the previous century, and the uh, idea is, is the following, that uh, all the objects are the same and all difference connected just with orientation to the observer. If you're looking, for example, in this direction, we see uh, object uh, first first type, and if looking in this direction, we see CFIT two galaxy. And a uh, big surprise was when a typical CFIT galaxy NGC forty one fifty one was changing type during the months, and I was lucky to to make this publication together with Chuaev and Luti in eighty four, and that was really big surprise and uh, show that orientation cannot be uh, the reason because uh, changing of orientation can be during the million or billion years but not during the months. So some other uh, models needed to explain uh, the difference in, in types and, and the variability of types during short time. This is uh, picture of very beautiful galaxy NGC 4151 and uh, I would like to show you most long like curve obtained for for the CFID galaxies more than 100 years before and triangles triangles is most called place and here is Odessa place triangles and here is Harvard place and here mostly Luthi data and uh, you know that photographical uh, monitoring is now uh, dead. And so master some way can, can fill these gaps in our data 
uh, and, and, and in, in part in this field it's very significant to have monitoring of, of all sky to, to be able to, to, to see like half of some object which was discovered for example later and you can see the history from the old time first observation here was in uh, 1906 you see in Moscow so uh, it's also from our publication this Luthi and, and Chiraev uh, shown how uh, Type was changed. I did. I was uh, changed from C51 to C2, and here is uh, variability in flux and and photometry. And uh, I would like to say about our uh, changing loop monitoring uh, project. Uh, the collaborator in, uh, for, in, in, just in the publication uh, more than in 12 countries and we have uh, a number of publications in good journals and uh, found new changing look events and, events and and hope to find more in investigator now about the first object ngc 1566 uh, it's uh, nearest specific galaxy located on the south hemisphere and uh, maybe closest to, to us because it's just seven uh, about seven megaparsec distance and uh, it was uh, very intensively investigated uh, in 60s and uh, last year it was not investigated so much uh, it just just in 2008, it was discovered some brightening, and, and we immediately start to make a photometry with master of this object. And uh, I was asking uh, Winkler and South African Observatory to try to get spectra to be uh, uh, sure the changing type has happened, and it was a lucky, a lucky uh, event, event, and the spectra was obtained, and we was immediately giving the telegram about this. And then uh, during the four months, we was uh, doing publication in, in Manras about the changing type in this object. And also, uh, it was uh, observed in infrared, some uh, infrared, some uh, variability strong, and uh, it was strong uh, variability in X ray due to SWIFT data and not only SWIFT, but some other satellite observing in X ray. And this is uh, the, the picture of, of this object. It, it's very beautiful uh, galaxy face on, uh, directed to us face on. And uh, you see that nucleus is not dominated here. And if this object would, would be 10 times further, we will be not able to see any variability in optical for any case. So just uh, due to X-ray variability, it was discovered. But in optical wavelengths, so amplitude is not so not so big. The nickname of this object is Spanish dancer. And typical spectra of this object is this uh, this type. You see that uh, broad component in H beta is about uh, absent, and uh, it's typical CFID 1.9 object. And uh, most of time it was uh, the, uh, such such object. Uh, here is the uh, light curves. It's X-ray. It's master and SSSN uh, and UV spectra, UV, UV photometry, and the same with a bigger scale. And you see that after the big maximum uh, was several rebrightenings. It was discovered in X-ray, X-ray, and in UV and optical, and uh, one of these rebrightening was discovered just by master observation because we have a lot of data and some of, of, of this rebrightening was missed by by Swift but was observed by master and then was confirmed independently with us as observers. Uh, the 
Amplit the ratio of V to X-ray was changing uh, during the uh, interval after the after the uh, first maximum. And you see this first uh, event uh, was brighter in V, and second was uh, lower, and ratio is different. It probably it's uh, it's common properties of, of such objects that after the the big maximum, the ratio of V to X-ray is dropped down, and this is uh, shown on this picture. It's a big, big uh, drop down of uh, this ratio. And now spectra. It's uh, spectra which shows a changing type. You see big bump in, in the V region, probably it's also common properties. And you see how strong is HB. And no one was seeing this uh, line. This object so strong, and very strong helium two, and very strong uh, iron two lines. And what is very interesting for me because I was working in this uh, many years before to find variability of this line. And here we see variability of coronal iron ten line very very clear. This line is very strong, but uh, before nobody was seeing this line so, so strong. And uh, it's one of the best uh, evidence of variability of coronal lines in, in, in AGMs. And here you see how broad it is and strong here. Now, also shown the variability step by step, you see how disappearing was happened. Really, we was observing two changing loop. First of all, changing loop was uh, from the low state to the maximum, and then it was uh, back to the low state. So it was two changing loops events observed in our publication, and was two publication first announced about changing loop, and, and, uh, and uh, second publication was about, about the changing loop back to the low states. Now about the another object, it's NGC 2617. Also a very beautiful galaxy. And uh, it was not observed so much before discovery of changing loop. It was just two spectra obtained before. And from this spectra, we see that HB that was very low. And this was discovery of Shapi and, and other that uh, this line is very, very strong. And we immediately, uh, oh, very soon after, start to get spectral observation and, and look the master data to see if the object is returned to the usual low states. And our publication uh, was uh, done. And we see that uh, in, from this publication in Manras that HB is still bright. And uh, we, we, the title of this publication is that the curtain is still open. Shabi was called the, uh, the, this publication, the man behind the curtain. And our uh, publication was that it's still open, uh, open to see the black hole directly without any obscuration. And we firstly found the peak in, in the red wing of the H beta, it was firstly noted in this object. And now we are working for another publication where we are presenting the long, long, long observation, including the uh, many, many telescope, and we start uh, monitoring with our new 60 centimeter telescope and uh, continue to, to make request for swift observation. And you see a big difference. X ray. Uh, it's at about the same level, but this big deep, deep minimum was in, in uh, 2018. And uh, uh, in first our publication about this, we say that just minimum is not enough for changing time. It's needed uh, at least one or more years for recovering the dust, and then we will see changing changing type again. Because just variability of, of the luminosity is not enough for changing type. Some part of, of, the, of this change connected with obscuration in the dust, but dust cannot be recovered so fast, like, like in this event. Uh, 
you see that uh, in this minimum, where deepest minimum, the broad H beta was clear seen, and the, uh, one year ago it, it was much lower, and before it was in low state several years. And it was enough to to change H beta broad component because obscuration in dust is increased. So it was. Uh, like our our forecast, and it, it and it indeed happened. Here, the variability uh, we are working in collaboration with Weir Observatory, Brotherton, uh, and other. And here is uh, H beta from uh, Weir Observatory, and red points is uh, in Kimo Observatory, 2.5 meter telescope, and you see perfect agreement here. Our data in infrared. And you see how good correlation is between infrared obtained in our observatory with uh, variability of H beta in absolutely diff different uh, telescope. And you see all minimum and maximum are the same. So the data here and here are perfect. And uh, we try to find the time delays between uh, uh, optical and infrared and found that uh, last year time delays uh, about 15 days, but before it was about 24 days. So it's, it's a, uh, in agreement with our hypothesis that the dust was recovering, so time delay uh, is low now. Here is uh, cross correlations for infrared bands, depending from the uh, optical one. And you see red red uh, line is K, that is H, and that is J. And J have some uh, maximum on the few days delay, which connected with accretion diff and some part with dust. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, also seen in other objects. So it's not, not some mistakes or something uh, connected with gaps in the data. It's, it's repeated for the same object in this in different interval is, is also the same. So it's also a common future. Here is time delay for uh, UV from X-ray, and you see that it's about a few days, and also some change in, in the time delay value. It was about 2.5 days, and now it's about 1.5 days. And uh, it's, it's some, some problem. How explain the time delay uh, between X-ray and UV is few days, but between UV and optical is just few hours or half day. It's, it's really a problem. And usual model, uh, like a lapse post post-corona uh, radiated to, to the accretion disk, uh, cannot explain this uh, time delay. So it's needed something else. One of idea discussed in publication is that uh, accretion disk is truncated. For example, two light days uh, gaps here, and it can explain geometrically can explain this, but physically probably uh, chairman of this session, Sakura can say if it's really really possible to to, to explain uh, existence of such uh, accretion disk with. Uh, hole in the centrum. In publication, some doubts about, uh, so my opinion is also it's very strange uh, if it really exists. So uh, something else is needed. For example, interesting idea of Edelson. Uh, he was suspecting that some, uh, uh, like like a torus in, in nearest uh, edge of the accretion disk, make a shadow to the accretion disk. So to hit the Accretion disk, it needed to hit this uh, small torus. So we come firstly here, and then it's not light travel velocity. It's another velocity, much smaller, and then it's needed three days to, to reach the, this surface. And then it's radiation to this uh, disk, which radiates in optics. So it explains the difference in delay uh, between X-ray UV and UV to, to optical. In any case, idea is interesting, probably is wrong, but, but in any case, interesting, in my opinion. And now is uh, 
my my try to to collect the common properties of the changing look the GM. First of all, Karen, uh, the changing look events are not uh, one-time one events. It's recurrent events. If it's once happened this object, it can be happen again and again. And so, uh, uh, some models can be rejected. For example, it cannot be happen in result of supernova, uh, result of tidal disruption events. It's something else needed to explain it. Uh, then we uh, see that, uh, that after the strong hot bust, as a rule, some rebriding are happen, and it's happened in many objects, not in, in, in what what we was see in, in, in publication. Just found the same. So it's also Common property rebrightening after the big outburst. Then uh, we found that the V X ray uh, ratio dropped down after the mine maximum. It's happened in few objects. Uh, delay of UV to X ray about a few days is also common property and good correlation. Uh, also, probably common properties. However, sometimes uncorrelated events are happen and that, that is also typical that some season correlation is perfect not no any correlation uh, during the strong outburst uh, the dust sublimated and needed few years for the dust and that can explain uh, vari variation in time delay for for infrared and can explain the change of type as well uh, also interesting uh, results that a shelf edge beta ratio can be uh, about five or ten, what is uh, much higher than usual uh, ratio, about three, for example. It was uh, found for for many objects and also common. And uh, time delay is grow along the sequence so H gamma, H beta, H alpha. It's also found in several publications, including our publication. Symmetrical double picket uh, broadband mirror lines uh, in high states and symmetrical one in, in low states probably is also typical property and variability of coronal lines is probably also some future which repeated from uh, time to time in this uh, type of objects and appearance of strong UV bump in, in the continuum is also happen in few of, of known changing looks. Also, we can note that uh, Eddington uh, ratio is uh, smaller than 1% in, in maximum and in hundreds or tens times low in minimum. So it's also, prop it's also property of changing look. It's not high, high rate uh, accredited uh, objects. Uh, most in intriguing uh, question is what is the reason for changing rule? In, in our toy model, this gas scale law, we suspect that uh, dust uh, is not present in this uh, cone, and uh, but it can, can appear if, if object is dropped down and low clouds here uh, are without dust, but after a few years the dust can be recovering and, and close the central region. And it will be additional reason for decreasing of raw components in in, in uh, emitted line. And here, uh, some ideas that is not uh, it's it's a real picture for our galaxy, nucleus of our galaxy, and real stars have uh, orbital periods. And was shown several times before, but here is not working. It's not my fault. Uh, and uh, why not? support that uh, the same uh, situation can be in uh, AGM and if star close become close to, to, to the black hole it can be a triggering mechanism for the uh, starting of, of some uh, brightening and uh, it's repeated again and again as, as uh, stars coming close to the black hole and uh, the stars can lose some part of, of material but it's not tidal disruptions it just uh, some small part of the mass of the stars can be lost and feed the black hole. Is this idea interesting? And what uh, uh, images here in this picture and was in two publication. Yeah. So I, I'm happy to say you uh, thanks for 
for attention and, and uh, big thanks to the SAO, uh, uh, Caucasian Mountain Observatory Master Team and SWIFT Team for organizing the abbreviation and thank you again for attention. Is that so? Yeah, so no question. All is clear. Uh, Victor, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, 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 Vlasinka. Who is Vlasinka? Oh, is it, excuse me. Master observation of all LIGO Virgo alerts. Oh, one or two. Please. Uh, so uh, today I want to talk about uh, all our observations uh, on the master uh, of uh, all uh, uh, gam or <laughs> gravitational waves uh, that uh, we received uh, during the first three uh, observation states, sets uh, of uh, LIGA and WIRGA. And uh, first of all, I want uh, to acknowledge uh, all of our collaboration because, uh, oh, master collaboration, I see, uh, I say, uh, because uh, all of these people uh, take a part uh, in this uh, uh, investigation and uh, nobody uh, was. Uh, not included. Uh, uh, oh, oh, Aaron. Uh, everybody uh, work for this uh, work, uh, and uh, uh, I uh, and uh, here in this uh, light uh, you see all of them. Um, Master is uh, is the robotic net network uh, that uh, spread over the world and. Uh, uh, it uh, means that we have uh, a lot of uh, time to observe uh, for the sky, and uh, this is uh, our uh, advantage. Thank you uh, for observing such uh, big. Uh, uh, our areas of sky, uh, like uh, I uh, will show you uh, later, uh, and uh, for such uh, long or like Kylanova events, uh, too. Uh, here on this slide, you see uh, uh, every of our observatory. Uh, and uh, I start to talk about how we observe uh, these events. First of all, I should mention our strategy. Uh, this strategy is not new. Uh, before the gravitational wave events, uh, there was uh, a lot of years when we observe uh, alerts like Fermi. It's uh, a giant uh, error boxes uh, and uh, squares of you. Uh, uh, and uh, by these alerts, uh, we uh, train our uh, uh, observatories uh, and planner how to work with uh, such uh, big uh, uh, fields of view. Uh, and uh, the first uh, 
point of uh, the, our strategy is uh, divide our sky by uh, uh, in, into the, the sections. Uh, it's uh, two multiplies two degrees. Uh, it's our field of view uh, of the one master tube. And uh, if we uh, use two master tubes, it's uh, two. Uh, uh, we should uh, multiply it uh, by two. Uh, and uh, apply this grid uh, to the area of the error box uh, and uh, use this grid as a reference. Uh, then we split our localization area. This is a new uh, point uh, in, in our strategy uh, in comparison with the strategy with the, which we use for the simple Fermi localizations, for example. Uh, we split our localization area into the nine uh, parts depending on of this uh, probability uh, uh, using the cumulative cum cumulative uh, probability it means that we uh, some more uh, some kind of sort of the flat uh, sites uh, which we uh, should to view uh, by some list uh, sorted uh, from the biggest to biggest probability to the lowest prob probability and after that uh, we uh, summarize it uh, till we have 10% uh, probability uh, it uh, will be the uh, highest uh, probability region uh, the region class 1 uh, and uh, after that we uh, make the same sum to the 20% that is the uh, second class and uh, go uh, continue this process uh, till uh, we reach 99.7% uh, that uh, means that we reach uh, three sigma of the whole sky localization. Uh, then uh, we observe the same site, uh, site uh, repeatedly after the long time uh, we uh, use usually uh, 10 hours because uh, the kylanova was uh, peaked at the 10 hours and we start to observe it at, after the 10 hours of the from the trigger uh, and uh, we, uh, of course, we should uh, mention some uh, restricted re restricted areas on uh, on our sky, like sun, moon, uh, and uh, horizon, uh, because we can't uh, observe uh, in these regions. Uh, and uh, some other areas that uh, we uh, use by uh, weight uh, in our planner. Uh, and of and the last uh, position, uh, it is the taking in, into account uh, position of the galaxies and their significance. Uh, it means that uh, it is a new uh, point uh, that we added after the uh, O2 uh, observational run two. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about this uh, point uh, later because. Uh, this is a new uh, point so in this strategy that we added uh, after the uh, famous uh, GV 170817. So uh, this is uh, some kind of uh, demonstration how we observe uh, each uh, rotation wave in inspection. Uh, the inspection starts uh, near the uh, most, the highest probability region, and uh, spreads over the uh, whole uh, sky region uh, to cover uh, every uh, probability uh, that we can. Uh, master. Uh, why uh, the, uh, the main uh, reason to uh, make these covers uh, is to find uh, transient, uh, most important, Kailanova, uh, because uh, this is the only one known uh, counterpart of the gravitational wave. Uh, 
but uh, we uh, in our uh, survey uh, comes uh, as a master transients uh, you can see this on the screen sorry uh, and uh, I will mention them uh, mostly uh, on the on my later because uh, there's a lot of transients what we found in the uh, during the gravitational wave surveys and uh, I start uh, to talk about uh, the gravitational wave events uh, eventually. Uh, First of all, I want to talk about the binary black holes because uh, it is the most uh, common uh, objects of the gravitational wave astronomy. Uh, and uh, we see it uh, a lot of uh, binary black holes. Uh, and first of all, I, may, I should mention the uh, first uh, gravitational wave event in the history. It is the gravitational wave event uh, 1508. Uh, uh, 14, uh, and uh, what is what interesting is in this event. You can see on the map uh, there is. Uh, oh, first of all, I fo I forgot to explain the map. Uh, on the map, you see uh, the orange uh, gradient. It's the probability uh, distribution. Uh, the uh, green squares is the uh, our master uh, coverage uh, uh, and uh, the blue points uh, it's uh, master transients that the master found in this uh, during this inspection and uh, first maps that uh, and not only first uh, is still uh, uh, there uh, LIGA never uh, send us a map with uh, zero probability in any region of the sky. Uh, that's why uh, the first hour uh, event, and I uh, show it on this map uh, especially, uh, that uh, we, we try to find uh, an optical counterpart of this event uh, in uh, every <laughs> sky region where the probability was not zero. Uh, and these transients, these five transients, uh, was not in the inside uh, three sigma uh, probability region, but uh, also we inv investigate them uh, because uh, I should to repeat that uh, nowhere uh, probability is zero, but it is below three sigma. Uh, we found five, six uh, transients. Uh, it was uh, the uh, dwarf nova, possible supernova, two possible supernovas, and one uh, supernova type two. Uh, the uh, whole of uh, our uh, investigation work uh, published in the MNRAS in uh, 2016. Uh, and uh, I will go to some uh, examples of the other uh, binary black holes. Um, the first example, it, uh, it was uh, from the uh, second observational run, uh, gravitational wave event 1701. Or four. It is the first. By the way, uh, it was the first uh, event from the observation round two. Uh, this uh, region was uh, covered uh, slightly uh, full, uh, and uh, we found a lot of transients in this region. Uh, and uh, one of of them was uh, really interesting. It was this. Short optical transient. You can see it uh, on the, the screen. Uh, we see this transient only on three pictures, and uh, uh, mostly that uh, it's like uh, the uh, 
with SETI uh, transient, but but uh, it has unusual uh, bright bright uh, amplitude, uh, approximately uh, 7.5 magnitude. Uh, but uh, I should mention that. Uh, Binary black holes uh, is uh, some kind of exotic uh, object for the optical counterparts, uh, and uh, we, uh, did, I think, uh, we didn't, we shouldn't see any optical counterpart from the binary black holes. But uh, we should uh, to uh, test it, test this uh, assumption. That's why uh, we. Uh, uh, make these statistics uh, for our uh, observations of uh, these uh, events. And uh, the last one uh, of the examples, uh, this is a small area, as you, as you can see. Uh, it is one of the examples when uh, the all of three uh, detectors, uh, like uh, and Virgo, uh, was working. And uh, they uh, produce the map uh, th that uh, is small for the gravitational waves. Uh, only the three, uh, 30 uh, degrees by the declination and uh, uh, approximately 20 degrees by the right of tangent. Uh, and uh, here you can see we found uh, six transients. Uh, in this small region. Uh, also, this uh, transient was uh, discovered uh, on the other instruments, uh, not only master. Uh, independently, it's uh, very important. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, th all of these transients, of course, are interesting, but uh, I s they not uh, uh, and, uh, connected to the gravitational wave event. Uh, uh, another one group of the uh, observational events uh, of the events that I can uh, mention that uh, uh, and uh, for now. This events only the binary black holes. That's why uh, this group is here. But uh, I think it's the group uh, from the uh, not uh, connected with uh, these events uh, because uh, these events uh, was observed uh, master by uh, not by uh, direct uh, alert mode. That means that we uh, didn't know about all of these events. This is just. Uh, examples of them. Uh, there is much, much more these events. Uh, uh, you can see here the we cover not in alert mode, uh, I repeat, uh, because uh, it was the usual survey. We don't know about these events uh, and uh, we cover these maps. Uh, in, independently uh, with uh, these alerts. Uh, and after some publications like uh, GBTC1, uh, uh, where uh, the LIGA published their first uh, catalog of the uh, gravitational waves, uh, we uh, uh, understand that uh, there was some uh, new uh, gravitational wave events uh, that uh, we didn't uh, know but see. Uh, and uh, for example, for this and this uh, events, we have some transients uh, that we uh, found uh, in a usually survey mode. Uh, this one was uh, some kind of unfortunate event because it's uh, on the uh, on the next day after the 708 uh, 17 but uh, also we cover it full uh, but uh, it was after a few days uh, and uh, I come to the new type of the event that uh, was uh, 
uh, that we started to receive uh, only from the third observational run. It's uh, a neutron star and a black hole merging events. Uh, and the first uh, one uh, that is confirmed that uh, it's a uh, neutron star and black, black hole merging event, it is the uh, 200105. Uh, here is a huge map of uh, its probability distribution. We found uh, a lot of uh, transients on this. You can see it here. Uh, but but uh, we uh, don't see in uh, this transient some strange transient uh, will, what can uh, produce uh, such events like uh, uh, neutron star and black hole merging. That's why uh, we can't say that some of these transients uh, is a counterpart of this event. Uh, but not only we, uh, because uh, fortunately, no, or unfortunately, I see, uh, I have to see nobody see any counterparts of this event. But uh, there was another reason why <laughs> nobody, I think, uh, see uh, uh, any counterparts of this event because during the alert, uh, when we receive uh, a message about this. Uh, it was it, it was not a uh, neutron star and black hole merging. More than that, uh, it was most likely the terrestrial object, uh, not the uh, neutron star black hole. But the later reduction of the Leyland Virgo says that this is most probably the neutron star and black hole merging event. The second one uh, known alert uh, of the uh, neutron star and the hole. Uh, it's uh, 2001 15. Uh, we cover it uh, almost the full, you can see. Uh, there was only one unknown, unknown event. Uh, we saw it on the four images, but uh, it's likely the uh, some weak star that has. Uh, a bright, for example, cataclysmic variable. Why not? Uh, and now uh, I uh, should mention some events that uh, is uh, in the border of the masses uh, that can be uh, both uh, black hole and uh, neutron star. It's um, it's named um, the marginal events uh, in the. Uh, Liga and Virgo publication. Uh, we observe it uh, almost. Uh, uh, you can see the coverage map, uh, and this is uh, one of the interesting uh, marginal events because uh, this uh, the only one marginal event that can be both a neutron star black hole, binary neutron star, and a binary black hole because the error bar of the for the masses for the estimations of the masses for this event is big for every component of this object. Here you can see all of for all the transients that we found, and uh, like the uh, neutron star uh, black holes transients that uh, I uh, mentioned before, there is no any uh, interesting for the optical ca counterpart uh, uh, transients. But uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, a few supernovas and uh, some uh, galactic active. Uh, active galactic activities, but it's of course uh, not connected with uh, this event and uh, other gravitational wave, of course. Uh, this one was small, you can see here, it's uh, uh, also the marginal event, but uh, here is uh, only choose between two, uh, neutral star black hole and uh, binary black hole. Uh, we found an interesting uh, 
further activity uh, on this uh, during this event, but uh, this is unfortunately the uh, one interesting event uh, during this uh, event. Uh, and I uh, come to the desert. Uh, binary neutron stars. Uh, the only one uh, type events uh, that can uh, produce the optical counterparts, and uh, we know it because of uh, 1707, that was uh, the five years ago. Uh, uh, during the uh, uh, observational run two, uh, Master found it on the uh, Argentina telescope uh, by the uh, very wide field camera. You can see the first images of this object, the, the Carolinova. Uh, after the 10 hours of the, from the trigger, uh, and uh, uh, but if uh, we won't have the uh, wide field camera, we will cover this. Uh, area uh, yeah. in this. Давай. Хорошо. Ну я может чуть позже, потому что всем только закончить. By this uh, strategy and by this algorithm, you can see on this plot uh, uh, our uh, plot of the coverage, how we uh, uh, distinct the whole area of this uh, patch. Uh, and uh, also, you can see on this plot is the uh, marks about uh, when uh, we, when uh, the uh, uh, international community receives the messages about this uh, event. First of all, it's the uh, first uh, image on the uh, uh, very wide field camera uh, of this. Uh, Object SS uh, SSS 17A uh, uh, green is the uh, master two first image. It is uh, by the our main te telescopes, uh, and uh, the red one. It uh, it was the first publication uh, of the swap uh, of this uh, object. Uh, so, uh, I mentioned about uh, SWOP already, that uh, it, uh, and uh, that Master independently found this, uh, uh, discover this object. Uh, but uh, there was also five other telescopes, not only Master, that independently uh, found uh, this object. Uh, and. Uh, there is some question how they uh, made it because uh, if you can see on this slide and uh, I forgot to uh, place here the uh, sizes of these telescopes because the master is a small and fast uh, telescope that cover uh, the uh, error regions of the gravitational wave events uh, very fast. Uh, but this is uh, big uh, telescopes, and they have uh, they don't don't have so such wide fields, such master, and uh, they can't uh, observe uh, so fast as master. Uh, how can they can uh, discover Kailanova in such speeds uh, like master? Uh, and uh, the answer is simple. They uh, don't see the whole region. They see on, only the galaxies in, the re in this region. Uh, this is the publication about the uh, sorted list of the galaxies uh, uh, that where can be the Kailanova in this uh, area region. And uh, you can see it's there is NGC 9493, where was uh, uh, where was Kailanova discovered? Uh, is 
third galaxy in this list. Uh, that means that uh, you can uh, just uh, uh, picture these three galaxies and found Kilanova. Uh, and uh, this is kind of uh, strange. Uh, and uh, we think that uh, uh, by mentioning galaxies, we can uh, uh, optimize our strategy to found uh, such objects uh, more faster. Uh, and we did it. Uh, the method that we use uh, in the, this uh, optimization is uh, the is using the merging rate of the binary neutron stars uh, that was first firstly mentioned in the work. Uh, not not firstly, but uh, <laughs> for, for us uh, the most. Uh, interesting work uh, uh, in uh, Lipinov at uh, LS uh, work in the Astrophysical Journal uh, at 1995. Uh, and we uh, take this formula as a reference uh, and uh, sort every galaxy in uh, error region. Uh, and uh, have the same result that I uh, mentioned on the uh, previous slide. But here is, uh, was uh, the simple uh, sort by the mass of the galaxy. But, uh, but this uh, formula, as you can see, uh, uh, connects uh, not only with the mass of the galaxy, but uh, with its uh, uh, star formation rate and uh, it's more accurate i think uh, and uh, every uh, <laughs> that uh, connects with this optimization uh, also the same i think <laughs> uh, and uh, the new one and uh, unfortunately the last one uh, event uh, that uh, uh, was found uh, and it was uh, the uh, binary neutron stars. Uh, it was the event 1904-25. Uh, uh, and uh, you can see this is the giant region. Uh, the reason of this uh, giant error region is the uh, giant uh, <laughs> distance to this uh, object. Uh, and the uh, consequences of this uh, distance I will mention later when we will compare, uh, make some compare between this event and uh, 1708 17. Uh, and uh, here you can see on this uh, slide uh, oh. the coverage of the master. Uh, it's not bad coverage, I, I can say, but because uh, there is not only one uh, uh, shot of the uh, one flat. Uh, there, there was maybe two or maybe three or maybe more. Uh, and we found uh, a lot of transients, of course, in this region. Unfortunately, uh, there is no Kylanova, but we also try because uh, uh, all of these transients, uh, supernova, possible su supernova, some uh, uh, cataclysmic variables, uh, dwarf novas was uh, published in uh, GCN uh, transients name server or astronomical stereograms and it was uh, tested. Uh, unfortunately, there is no Kylo Nova. And the main question, why? Why we didn't see the new Kylanova, but we have the new event of the binary neutral star? Of course, the first reason is the giant threat of the 1904-25. It's uh, 12,000 of the square degrees. Uh, uh, and uh, you can see that uh, the uh, error area of the uh, 17 or 17 was only the uh, 150. 
square degrees. Uh, that means that uh, this patch we cover by the one, only one night you can, you can do this. Uh, and this patch we cover <laughs> by the two, twelve or two weeks. It's a very hard uh, work for uh, the telescopes, and, uh, but we did some uh, uh, good work, I think, because we found a lot of transients in this uh, region. Uh, and the reasons of this uh, giant coverage maps, as I mentioned, was uh, is the giant distance of this uh, event to this event. And also this distance uh, make some constraints on the uh, kind of uh, brightness. Uh, for example, here at the Sentinel 13, uh, the peak magnitude was the 17 uh, magnitude. Uh, and on this distance, this uh, kind of will have uh, uh, 19 uh, 19 or 20, uh, approximately here. Uh, that means that uh, this kind of novel will be on the masters and uh, in magnetic units. Uh, and uh, I should mention that the masters magnetic units is uh, uh, approximately uh, 20 magnitude. Uh, but it is not, not only one constraint, because we have uh, that constraint. Uh, for example, the Kayanova have uh, <laughs> uh, the brightness of the Kayanova should decrease uh, in time, and it decreases uh, not so far, but enough to uh, not found it. Uh, and uh, the highest uh, estimations for this. Uh, uh, degrees is uh, four days, and we should find on this giant region uh, a by only four days. But uh, uh, and the coverage for these four days was uh, one thousand degrees, as I remember, uh, appro approximately uh, more than one thousand degrees. Uh, it was uh, mostly on this region, uh, the northern region, uh, and the uh, was here. Uh, and uh, of course, we didn't find the Caranova, but we had a lot of transients from these regions. Uh, from this uh, uh, time interval, uh, and uh, all of this uh, says that uh, the probability to find the Kayanova is low, very low in uh, comparison with uh, uh, 17 or only 17. And uh, here I did the attention that uh, the uh, binary neutron stars can uh, have the other orientation. We can't uh, see the jet, for example, in, in this orientation like the uh, 17 or 17. Uh, the binary system can uh, have uh, the orientation that is uh, <laughs> some kind of connection with the jet orientation, but it's not obvious. Uh, and here I want to end my talk, but before I mention the statistics of uh, uh, our observations of uh, gravitational wave events. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the uh, first of two uh, duration runs. Uh, we saw the 20 alerts, that uh, 11 from them, there is only 11 from them is uh, confirmed. And uh, there was a great result for the gravitational wave from uh, Discovery of the Kailanova and uh, its connection with the uh, gravitational wave event. Some of you have a uh, uh, more than 40 
400,000 souls at frames uh, during this uh, 20 hours. Uh, and uh, we cover a big square root of the uh, sky. In, compar in comparison, uh, we have the uh, third observation one, where we uh, use a new strategy, some uh, changes uh, of our strategy and the uh, planner, uh, and uh, we have uh, more about uh, this uh, uh, observational one, and uh, you can see that uh, there was 73 confirmed events, uh, that 57 OS we uh, observed, uh, but it's not uh, means that we didn't observe all, because uh, the only uh, for uh, this one, 57, the 47 from these confirmed events was received by GCN, that means that, you know, again, we uh, saw in uh, our more only this uh, detail from the 43 events uh, was confirmed, uh, still unconfirmed, uh, as I can see, uh, 14 of them. Uh, and uh, there is some interesting uh, uh, mention that uh, this 14 uh, events are <laughs> interesting from the uh, gravitation wave observing uh, round because uh, there was a lot of uh, probable uh, binary Newton star mergers, uh, Newton star co mergers, but uh, like a few uh, silence about this events. Uh, and uh, 30 events then we add later. It is uh, by the proposed uh, modules and two uh, users are the phone and uh, we hope uh, they will publish it so in Grace the Bell on some uh, places where we can uh, take these maps of these events. And uh, reduce them to our surveys. Uh, from the report uh, I mentioned already, the one to start, uh, uh, they found four possible Newton star reports and uh, six states, uh, one of the reports. And in comparison of the, with the uh, first two observation rounds, you can see we made uh, less frames, but it not means that we uh, made uh, less work, it's more uh, less efficient, because you can see the average coverage is better than uh, first two observation rounds. It's uh, and it can be explained by uh, two reasons. Uh, the average uh, errors, error area of the ligand meter becomes smaller, but uh, in comparison with the uh, uh, first observation runs, it's uh, small uh, change. Uh, but uh, the optimization, optimization of the our strategy, not only uh, uh, that I mentioned in this talk, but uh, some technical, for example, uh, give, uh, give us this efficient on uh, the two times less uh, out of frames. And in conclusion, uh, we observe we observe from master huge RS on the uh, during the rotation wave events, we found uh, more than uh, 1,500 transients, uh, including the great discovery of the Kairanola, uh, and we did it independently. Uh, and of course, the activation of our search strategies. And of course, we are all eating the operational one for four 
that will start at uh, March 2023. Thank you. Oh. Yes. Thank you very much. Really, I was enjoying your talk because it was a presentation of history of discovery. Mm -hmm. But uh, by the way, it's I have a couple of questions and also remarks. Uh, first, uh, what about coverage? You used coverage and color strip in your presentation because numbers are not visible. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what do you mean uh, coverage and units? What is that? Color, color. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, orange uh, gradient is the uh, gravitation wave of the units that we receive from the light gradient. Uh, green squares uh, is our uh, plans that we uh, shoot during this event. Uh, as you can see the descendant grid of the, our master network. Uh, that we use on the, all, all of our service. Uh, and uh, the new one is uh, our farm, our transit that we discovered during this. Uh, and also, according to my understanding, probably I'm wrong, but according to my understanding, time is also a key issue. Because it's, but because immediately after what I say went, it's, uh, it's more probable to find it has to be presented somehow. I don't know. You, uh, you are uh, master. Uh, <laughs> Me not. I forgot to mention that uh, all of these maps uh, was made uh, for the two weeks uh, intervals, uh, but the most uh, narrow search Okay. Uh, is uh, for the first week where we can uh, uh, predict that we can see uh, some counterpart. Uh, after the first week, there is uh, low probability that we can, uh, but we still see. This. And also, you mentioned it, but it's probably I would like to ask you to to add some, let us say, additional, uh, let us say, thinkings. So you said that it's for binary black holes. If you have only binary black holes, it's worse if you have only binary black holes and no matter around. In this case, there is no reason to expect some optical transient because it's only gravitational wave event. Probably, probably, I don't know. I am sure that you and I like Virgo people, if they are asking you to, to, to search for transient, probably they are expecting to find something. In this case, there are only two possibilities to find something. Uh, they are not black holes, but some exotic holes, some alternative culture, or you have some black holes and some matter around black holes. Due to, for instance, stellar wind or something like this, due to stellar evolution or other reasons. In this case, there is a shock of gravitational waves uh, in respect to this matter. In this case, it's, you could expect uh, what about your uh, opinion concerning uh, this direction? I think that uh, this is uh, the, the optical counterpart of the binary black holes is very exotic, but it also can be. And uh, we should uh, to reach some statistics to say that it is uh, hard to observe observe and uh, we didn't reach it now but I think we uh, reach it uh, in a few <laughs> observations later. Uh, and in nowadays for example binary black holes we uh, observe in uh, <laughs> Ah, in less priority than the other uh, uh, type of the gravitational wave events because uh, we didn't expect any objects from this uh, type of events. But it can be. It's very exotic, uh, very rare, and I don't, honestly, I don't know its probability, uh, but uh, we can't. Uh, 
close any that we didn't see. And, and the one, one I asked ask myself, myself about the reason to, to, to search for tra optical, optical transient for binary, binary black holes when I ask. But, but also, also I'm, I'm, I'm answering that, that is for myself. That, that is, it also was a good training for you. Because, because, it's, because you, you when you really need to find optical transient five years ago, you will you were well trained. So in this case, it's... Uh, so, so you are ready, ready for discovery, discovery. But, but it's, it's like, like, like let, let us say, preparation for sport, sport, sport you know. It's you will be well, well, well trained. But, but, but also, also when, since probably you will continue to, pre to present this, this kind of history, history it was, let us say, uh, it will be very important for audience, also for these events, to show masses of uh, these uh, components. It's just for, for to, 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 to see, see to see, see I mean, what, what is that? And also, also there is a question. What you quoted, I mean, I mean uh, uh, Lipunov and all paper 1995 and, and previous slide. Could you show me the previous? What is, what is it? Yes, yes. What is Conferencia Lomonos of Moscow, uh, April 2011? <laughs> because because it was, you showed picture from, I mean, well, I mean, another, another book, book, you know, uh, completely. Sorry, I forgot uh, to uh, <laughs> delete this uh, phrase. Uh, yes, I copy uh, this uh, slide from the other conference. So, but uh, but uh, in this, this period, period, you have no gravitational wave, wave events, you know, <laughs> at this time. You know? <laughs> yeah, like time, time machine. <laughs> 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 okay, good. Thank you. Huh? Please, question. What are the typical area that must have come covered in one night? Uh, the typical area that must have come covered in one night, approximately the, uh, 400 or 500. Oh, four or five hundred square degrees, I think. But if we have a uh, first night on the all, all of the hour of the earth, we can reach approximately uh, one thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no? no question. Thank you. <laughs> Coffee break until six, and after this, the uh, report from. Next. Hello. Oh. I don't hear anything. Ah. Uh, are you uh, uh, how to listen? Listen me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you can start with Vittorio. Okay, Vittorio. Comrades, <laughs> comrades. Nice to meet you. Please start. Uh, nice to see you. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Patino Alvarez. I'm from the National Institute of Physics, Optics, and Electronics in Mexico. And I'm also a Max Planck partner group leader. So mm -hmm. tonight, uh, well, today we're going, I'm going to, instead of giving you, a, let's say, a report of what we have done with the master data, I want to talk a little bit about my research and how I want to incorporate the master data. So, for the starters, I'm going to give you an introduction about uh, AGNs and specifically blazers, which are my main research topic. I'm going to talk to you about some results on multi-wireland variability. 
and also the relationship between the gamma ray variability and the variability at parcel scale as seen with BLBI observations. Then if, if I have done, then I will tell you a little bit about the Baldwin effect and then how to use, how I pretend to use the master telescope for my research. First of all, about the active galactic nuclei. This image shows you the common um, unified model. So how you can have a narrow line, AGM, either radio galaxy, CIFR, etc., or broad line radio galaxy, CIFR 1, uh, type 1 or type 2 QSOs, etc. Also with the different components of, of a normal AGM. But my main research topic is in blazers, which are the, IG, the AGMs, which have their jet pointing almost directly to our Lano site. And something very interesting, particularly about the blazers, is that they are constantly emitting um, uh, changing fluxes in all bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. To the right, I have here a little bit of a fast uh, summary of the different emission processes involved. This is for electronic model, by the way. So we have the pressure disc, the dusty torus, the jet, the hot corona, as well as the broad line emission region and the narrow line emission region. And just to make it easy to understand some of the things that I'm going to uh, talk later, I want to very quickly talk to you about this parameter that is called non-thermal dominance. Long story short, this is a parameter that you can obtain using optical or UV spectra that can tell you what is the main source or the dominant source of the optical or UV continuum. The, the important part is the last part of the equation, which basically tells you uh, how much of the emission you are seeing is from the jet and how much from the disk. So this is a very useful tool because it will, uh, it will allow us to see when the jet is the dominant source of continuum and when the disk is the dominant source of continuum, with the threshold bit being a non-thermal dominance equal to. But let's go ahead to multi-wavelength variability. I, can, uh, I have a little bit about uh, many different objects, but I'm going to try to go uh, fast here. It's just to show you how different each blazer is from each other. First of all, here we have uh, 3C273 that many of you may know is the first quasar. And from top to bottom, in the left uh, figure, we have gamma rays from Fermilat, X-rays from the Swift XR telescope. Uh, then we have the uh, optical continuum from the Stuart Observatory and the OEGH, the Guillermo Aro Astrophysical Observatory, which is the same place where the master uh, telescope is installed. Next, we have the polarized flux from the Sewer Observatory. Then, uh, B-band photometric uh, data from Stuart and um, the SMARTS project in Chile. Then, the submillimeter array, one millimeter data, and 50 gigahertz data from the Owens Valley Radio Observatory. And to the right, I have a little figure that just shows uh, some of the variability that we see in the, in the optical spectra where not only the continuum, but the line, the, the flux of the line changes a lot. And since we have a spectra, we can calculate the non-thermal dominance parameter that I was talking about. And for this source, 3273, it turns out that every non-thermal dominance parameter is lower than two. Why being lower than two is important? Coming back to this part, Non-thermal dominance equal to, 
means that the jet and the disk are uh, equally luminous. But if it's low, that means that the accretion disk is uh, dominates the luminosity, which is not common for blazers, mainly because since the jet is uh, looking in our direction with a very small angle, then we have a relativistic Doppler boosting that usually makes it more luminous. So that, that array tells us a lot about how luminous is the accretion disk on this source. And the second thing that I want to show you is something that I did with, that I found with the B band, which is the green points, and the uh, 15 gigahertz radio band, which is the gray or brown, I don't know what color you're seeing them. But I think what we have here is the normalized light curve, light curves of these two. And you can probably see we have an almost perfect anticorrelation. When one is increasing, the other decreases. And this happens for a little over two years. Um, I've been, uh, I looked in the literature, I never found something like this. But the way we're explaining this is that the inner part of the accretion disk might have fallen into the black hole. And then after some time, because we do find a delay, only oh, like yours. Ah, Victor, can I uh, ask you? Go ahead. Please. I don't understand what difference is between green and uh, uh, green is optical, green yes. is optical, and yes. uh, gray is radio. Uh, <laughs> we have same anticorrelation uh, in the micro quasar, but between the optical and polarization, the same mm -hmm. effect. Yeah, micro quasar. Yes. Uh, where uh, uh, V0404 Cygni, well known micro quasar. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay so I, micro -quasar. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do, do, do you remember the delay for that? Because that would be interesting for me. I, uh, no, no, no we, we did not see a okay. delay. Okay, ah, oh, you didn't see a delay. That actually makes sense because of the scale. Maybe I'm seeing a delay here because the region is simply so much bigger. That's interesting. Thank you. So, yeah, this is something interesting that is not exactly common, except in this microquasar, which is good to know. So, this is uh, very quickly what we found for this source. A uh, delay of 40 days between these two bands which basically will tell us what is the um, the distance between the black hole and the radio emission region. Not directly as a light travel time, because we have to remember that uh, in radio we often see superluminal components, but that doesn't mean that they are traveling faster than light. Now, the next source, just very quickly, again, we have multi-wavelength like yours, going from gamma, X-ray, polarized, UV, optical, infrared, and one millimeter. Long story short, we found that uh, first in the, if you see the gamma rays, the top one, there's a part where the light cube is almost flat, while we have a lot of flares in the rest of the of the light cubes. So we found a gamma ray absorption mechanism that I actually made the model for it. And we also found something that is uh, that goes against the dichotomy that has been, uh, let's say, accepted for over 20 years, that flood spectrum radio quasars are dominated by external inverse Compton. Because in this case, we have that part of the light cubes are dominated for external inverse Compton and part of the light cubes are dominated by synchrotron self content. So this is saying that the gamma ray emission mechanism changes with time, it's not the same, which also gives us the idea that there might be multiple gamma ray emission regions. And uh, 
some of them may be dominant during different time periods, which makes very, very hard to model this kind of, of sources. This is another source that is called CTA 102. Um, this is a very well-known source in the last few years, mainly because it had been almost dormant for about for over 10 years, for over a decade, and then it had a very, very large flare. The, the continuum in the optical increased by 180 times. So that's a lot. Um, we see uh, flaring in almost every other band, including X-rays, gamma rays, infrared, in the emission line, UV, and in one millimeter. And in this case, what we find from this multi-wavelength like yours is that there's broad line emitting material at 25 parses from the black hole. And that is very important because that is telling us that the what I call the canonical problem region, the one that we all know that is around the black hole, spherical, visualized, that means that the broad line emission, not all of it comes from this region. So that already tells us that the broad line emission is not visualized, which immediately discards the use of reverberation mapping for this kind of source at least for this source, and we, we found something similar for others. And also the fact that it's so far away from the black hole tells us that the uh, source of ionization is not the accretion disk, it's jet. So this is only one example in which the common spectroscopical methods to calculate Black hole masses should not be used. Another very common source, or very famous source, that was at some point called the Crazy Diamond, because it was the brightest gamma ray source in the sky. So here we have from top to bottom gamma rays, X rays, UV emission line, uh, iron 2 emission. Optical, infrared, one millimeter, and 15 gigahertz in the radio, optical polarization degree, and the optical polarization angle. And the different uh, shadow parts uh, are we call it ejections that were found in BLBI images, ejections from the radio core. So basically, a new component that is being ejected. So in this case, we found different things. First, we found uh, that some of the flares are not only due to uh, the ejection of components at parsec scale, but also because of interaction of some of these components with a stationary component that exists in the source. But the interesting part is that this stationary component is also uh, multiple parsecs away from the black hole. And we are observing once again re a response from the emission line, from the broad emission line. So this is another source in which the broadland region is not derealized. And actually, this is the first source in which we presented in 2013 the first direct observational evidence of this happening. And another thing is that in this source, we also found that at different periods of time, the dominant gamma ray emission mechanism is different. Then we have this other source. I, we have been a little bit busy. <laughs> in which we try to look for the same kind of things. But in this case, we found a gamma ray emission region at 37 parsecs from the jet apex. Um, and we found different delays between the continuum and emission line, which is what is used for the reverberation mapping and then for the black hole masses. 
but we found different delays, which means we found different sizes of the broadland region, which sounds like it doesn't make sense because it shouldn't. But the thing is that these different delays, we found them depending on which is the dominant source of the continuum, whether it's the jet or the disk. So this is already telling us that not being able to separate this or not taking into account the fact that there is a jet in a lot of the AGNs uh, can give you a bad result or a spurious result when you're trying to calculate black hole masses. So again, this is a, a problem for the common way that, that we do it. Now, in, we also found evidence of outflowing line emitting material. Once again, the broadland region is not virialized. So we are consistently finding these things, in this evidence in different sources. So it seems like it's not something isolated to just one or two. And then uh, we have this source, parts 1510 minus minus 089. Once again, we have multi wavelength like curves. And the last one is the non thermal dominance. And just to, to show you what I mean when we find different delays, we have here a cross correlation, which is basically the way that we calculate the delays between two bands. We have the, the H gamma emission line and the optical continuum at 5100 Armstrongs. And the lines that you see are the 90, 95, and 99% significance. Usually, I will take a peak that is above 99% as a delay. But in this case, like you can see, there are so many of them. Like, how do you distinguish which one is the real one? It, um, we did this analysis with three different cross correlation methods, and we, we got the same thing with the three different cross correlation methods. So while other words have obtained uh, only one delay, but I've taken the data from those words, um, I have obtained something different. And something that concerns me about those other words is that they obtain cor uh, correlation coefficients higher than one, which as we know, it doesn't make sense statistically. So even in published, uh, published words on journals, blah, 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 on reference journals. So this is something that we have to, to be very aware that there might be problems even with published results. And then uh, what we have here in the blue points are the ones where the continuum is dominated by the accretion disk. And the black points are the ones where the continuum is dominated by the jet, right? So in the top panel, the dashed line is the relationship that you will expect for radio quiet quasars. So mostly for quasars dominated by, by accretion disk. And it is obvious that the, when the object is dominated by the jet, uh, this thing, this relationship does not hold at all, which once again is one of the things that, uh, one of the assumptions that people made when they use reverberation mapping, mapping or single epoch techniques to calculate black hole masses. In this object, uh, most of the disdominated data follows this, but the Jet dominated does not. We didn't found any correlation between the continuum and the mission line for the jet dominated data, but also we did not found a sign of additional broadline material in the jet. So this this last result is different to the other sources. And now, when talking about finding where is the gamma ray emission region. This is once again 3C279. And in this case, we also have a light curves of the flux of different components, different BLBI components. That's important. 
namely the core, uh, different ejections that we can see both in the 43 gigahertz VLBA data or the 15 gigahertz VLBA data. And what we found is that there is a correlation between one of them, which is the Mojave Future B, with the gamma ray variability. This is telling us that the variability in this component uh, has a correlation with the gamma rays. So we can assume that we have a gamma ray emission region there. So which means where the future is. So th this means that we are pinpointing in a BLBA image where we have a gamma ray emission region, which is not something very common. And another thing is that this uh, future B is moving away from the core. So it's a moving component with a linear distance between 42 and 54 parsecs from the core. And it's also only responsible for 33% of the variable gamma rays. That 33% I got it from the, sperm, the squared Spearman correlation coefficient. So if only 33% of the variability in gamma rays is due to this future B, that means that there should be other gamma ray emission regions. And we're also doing something similar for 3C454.3, where we have a lot more components. On the left, we have an actual observed image, and on the right, we have a model. So this was a lot harder to, to model. All these components are about six sigma. And it turns out that we did found correlation with the 15 gigahertz score but only 34% of, of the of the mission. So once again, this is telling us that the gamma ray emission uh, comes from multiple zones at different distances. And in some cases like this, the said emission region is moving. So as I said before, this is, uh, our findings are making uh, even harder to try to model the jets of these sources. But okay, that's fine. We're getting these results. This is my interesting research. So how, where can master enter in all of this? Well, there is the obvious way that is simply giving a sample of sources and continuously monitoring the sources, like getting one photometric point every three or four days, for example, that will be the easy one, the, the, the easy part or the more common. But there's also, uh, once again, this is more uh, like yours. There is also the flares, the, the parts where we have the highest uh, flux. So I will be interested in having a 24-hour monitoring of one of these sources when they are in a flating state. This can be very easily obtained uh, with triggers from SWIFT, triggers from Fermi. And if I can get simply a 24-hour run with constant photometry from the master telescopes, then this will allow me to also use the Fermilab data that can be done uh, like use up to a cadence of three hours to precisely identify for at least for uh, individual flares what is the gamma ray emission mechanism, the size, the exact size of the emission region, because sadly uh, we don't know the exact sizes of these emission regions because even with the current uh, data of Fermi, that's very hard to do simply because in most cases, the, the, sizes, the, the sizes obtained can only be as big as the cadence, which can be one week or one day, which is what most people do for Fermi, simply to have a better signal to noise ready. 
that during a flare, we expect that we have a good signal to noise radio every three hours. If we have something similar in the optical, this will definitely allow us to identify precisely all these different things. So that's what I want to use the master, the master for, apart from just monitoring sources. We use it as a trigger, which is the way that most of you have been using. And I will be happy to answer any questions. Oh, that's a cheer. Very nice, very nice pre presentation. And I like your English. It's very, uh, <laughs> very understandable for me. <laughs> that's okay. very good. Thank okay, you. that's Latinic manner. Okay, I would like to ask you uh, before people have, I see a lot of questions, but uh, now I would like to ask you uh, what time you mean? You mean the uh, synchronous observation monitoring of this quasar, yes? But yes. In the alert, who, who, who gives the alerts? Who give alerts in this composition? Okay, the alert are given by Fermi and Swift. Uh, no I, problem. I no problem. Mm -hmm. That's a very good idea. We have experience, but uh, uh, maybe if the uh, Danilo, can you prepare this paper, uh, this picture, which I use? Or you can't show it? No, okay, no, 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 uh, alert in by which way by email by publication in hotel where okay yeah. uh, usually i receive them by email but to the sample of sources that i get i simply tell them when they are about a certain flux because uh, automatically they do uh, aperture photometry for all the data that they obtain so they can get something like this within a few minutes of getting it. It's a little different than the one from the G, uh, gamma ray burst monitor, but and sometimes these things can be uh, observed by the gamma ray burst monitor too. So that can also be. But uh, they give, give telegrams and emails uh, with delay. So if you is interesting more operative photometry? No, no. Uh, no, 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 no. The, 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 the operative no. photometry that I'm talking about in Fermi is something that they already automatically do. All the light cures that you find in the Fermi no. webpage are operative photometry. Uh, they are not used for science. Only the idea is something is increasing. Uh, Victor. Uh, yes. We understand that Fermi, if the Fermi registered the gamma ray uh, burst from these uh, quasars, uh, it can give the automatic alerts to the master. But don't don't talk. But you say not in same second observation. You need uh, you you send us email. And we turn on all our telescopes and we start in monitoring. Okay? Yeah, but we basically, will... just one day, like one uh, photometric point every hour, for example, yeah. will be more than enough. Okay. Uh, any questions? Is there any questions? I would like to. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, we have this picture. Uh, in the Zhenya Garbovskoy talk was this uh, picture mm -hmm. which I want to show Victor. Is, is there any Zhenya uh, Garbovskoy doctor? I, yes? I can stop sharing if oh, you want to do the presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Женина нету здесь да, да, доклада. Just a moment. I would like to... Вообще It's эта картинка, она где известная, где-то лежит. Ну, что происходит сейчас? Чтобы вам показать. Не, она не... О! Стой, стой, еще, еще, еще. Ты, ты не спешит, мы же пропустим. Ну, да, это. Вот он, так, так, так. Опа! This good. Вот, вот она, да. Давай, это. Сейчас я его покажу все. Uh, can you see this uh, picture from our paper? You see here? Okay, see it. That, that, uh, that is a well-known uh, microquasar V404 Cygni, which, mm, yeah. uh, which wake up at 2015. Uh, Outbars. You see here, that is a graph, you see, this one, for example, mm -hmm. that is polarization. Yes. This, this both curve is optical, but mm -hmm. the uh, red point is a polarization. Mm -hmm. That is a flux in optical, flux mm -hmm. in, in clear optics, you understand? Yes. When the optical yeah, yeah. Go down, polarization, uh, polarization is growth. This means mm -hmm. that we, we see synchrotron. Some, mm -hmm. some synchrotron sources like to Z. Okay, mm -hmm. very interesting to analyze maybe, really maybe nice. some synchrotron, maybe no, maybe some connection. But you can see, is there any delay? I, I, we do not, we don't. You see another, we see three, Uh, such episode in discovering mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in this source. Okay, and uh, yes. uh, Victor, is there any questions? Uh, 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 Kirill, там Виктор, следующий тоже будет Виктор? Подождите. Кто? А, Глеб. Хорошо. Uh, I would like to invite you Mm -hmm. On the second, uh, to listen second to uh, uh, second to uh, talks, the first mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, concerning the Mexican master uh, master mm -hmm. in Mexico, and second second after that will be the very interesting uh, discoveries in the behavior of the safer galaxy with different types variable changing type of the safer galaxy by Viktor Oknyansky. Okay, so mm -hmm. I invite you, do not go uh, very uh, far. Yeah. No, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, I've been here for the last four hours. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much and thank you very much for the very nice talk. Thank you. And okay, uh, is there any uh, 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 Gleb and tip of uh, the next talker? The Gleb is uh, uh, very old, participated in the master project starting zero years of this century. Yes, sure. Да так не разговаривайте, когда я с ним разговариваю, пожалуйста. Беспорядок. And uh, he participated in the last very hard work at the Kananea uh, city, very, very close to Kananea city. You remember, some people remember from Mexico, remember him. And now he presented a new result. Uh, I would like to say about the previous talker, he is our supervisor. Uh, during the first five days or seven days, yes. Some uh, uh, thank you very much, Victor. Okay. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I want to discuss the first results of a new master site located in uh, Observatorio Astrofisica Guillermo Armo in Mexico, uh, as it was presented. 
That's why the abbreviation for this site is OAGH. That is Victor with flag. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, on the on the list left side of this picture. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, say thanks and hello to all our co colleagues, co authors, and uh, collaboration teams all over the world, and especially to the people from National Institute of Astrophysics, Optics, and Electronics, especially Victor. Hello. <laughs> we all remember you and remembering you often. <laughs> And uh, uh, much thanks to all the staff of the Guillermo Aro Astrophysics Observatory also, because they did a lot of hard, dirty work for us that uh, helped us to finish our work with a great speed and efficiency. Uh, the place where new master observatory is located uh, is nearby the Cananeo city. It's uh, on the north of uh, the Mexican, near the uh, USA border. You can see on the first picture the mountain with the two peaks, uh, one uh, of them uh, occupied by uh, a two meters uh, telescope, Guillermo Arm Observatory, which presented on the second uh, image. And the other peak, uh, occupied by Master Observatory now. Uh, we were very happy being there, and we were blessed to live in an uh, old-fashioned home uh, in the center of this slide. Uh, it's, it has its own uh, uh, history, which uh, is very interesting, but uh, not, uh, not for this uh, uh, report. We did a lot of work to mount all the systems together, to adjust, to, uh, to make them together work uh, as a robotic, uh, fully robotic observatory. And uh, we have, a, as I mentioned before, huge help from uh, people uh, uh, from uh, people from uh, Astrophysical Institute. They even feed us every day and uh, we can do everything we need. Um, as a result, we have now fully equipped uh, site with uh, the same uh, uh, hardware and software infrastructure as at all our observatories, which is the main master feature because we can have the same photometry results in different from different uh, sites. Uh, we have. Now two tubes with uh, uh, 40 centimeters centimeters aperture and uh, four square uh, four square degrees field of view uh, with four filters uh, polarizers uh, auto focusing systems and the system that let us uh, to converge uh, or diverge uh, uh, tubes to shoot one frame. For example, in different filters, in different in different tubes, or different polarizations, or to diverge them to uh, observe a more wide wider field of view. Uh, here is uh, here we see on the previous picture we see the first light. Uh, yes, uh, we've got and the first uh, results we get for these eight months of exploitation of this site. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to say uh, the site looks very effective because on the first picture, you see that almost third of all optical transients we've discovered during this period of time had been made uh, on uh, uh, Mexican observatory. It means that we have eight, uh, eight sites, but uh, Mexican made a third of all optical transient discoveries. It's uh, very important. And uh, on the next picture, we see the distribution of magnitudes of these optical transients. We can see that most of them have magnitudes from 18 to 20, which is uh, very good for our uh, work, for uh, our uh, specialization. Maybe it's not uh, as good for for a more deeper telescopes, but uh, we have a huge uh, areas. We have a huge uh, 
view fields, view fields, and that's why we can have uh, 2021 uh, transients only, 2021 magnitude. Um, all, also, the geography of this uh, site is very good because we see that most of these, uh, those observations have been made uh, proprietary by Mexican observatory, even in all master network. We have only two uh, optical transients that were also uh, observed by other, uh, by other observatories. One of them is our AMUR master, master AMUR, and other is ZTF. And on the second picture on this slide, uh, on the right picture, we can see that uh, all the, those, almost all except one, of those transients have been uh, discovered by our classical algorithm. When we, uh, when the telescope go goes uh, into transients, well, he uh, shoot any frame uh, with uh, three three times and make two transients of this uh, area and uh, uh, it's enough for all those transients to be discovered it means uh, that our algorithms techniques and uh, all equipments work very efficiently uh, at the dark side we see that uh, we need more sites sites in uh, southern in uh, southern hemisphere because uh, uh, you can see here the first picture it's uh, uh, optical transients uh, uh, and the brightness of these uh, dots uh, uh, correlate with the brightness of uh, corresponding uh, optical transients and you can see they uh, they they present here uh, in uh, uh, ecliptic coordinates, so you can see the brighter sources tend to uh, locate uh, to the lower uh, descent. Uh, but it's a clear uh, selection effect because uh, uh, when you locate it in uh, northern hemisphere and uh, look down, you see uh, bad quality. A picture you get bad, bad quality picture because of uh, uh, light pollution and uh, when you look uh, closer to the uh, zeni you see more deeper you get more deeper image that's why you can uh, get more uh, fade transients toward to to the zeni and uh, that's what we see on this picture but uh, uh, and also we have a galaxy here it doesn't show but uh, there is a loop uh, milky way milky way loop uh, with uh, associated with the dark areas here um, the detection of all those transients uh, have been made uh, very precise as uh, you can see on the right uh, picture uh, the red, red um, red uh, lines uh, reflect the limit uh, of uh, uh, detection of uh, stars on uh, frames that uh, contain uh, optical transients. And the blue is uh, the magnitude of uh, optical transients itself. So you can see here the gap, uh, the gap uh, uh, between uh, brightness of optical transients and limit of uh, detection any sources on corresponding image. As you can see, almost everywhere it's uh, at least one magnitude high. Uh, that, and we can conclude that uh, uh, it's very, uh, it's very uh, precise, precise detection because it's not at the level of uh, the noise. It's very high from the noise level. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't uh, uh, get uh, observations deeper, more deeper observations uh, by other telescopes of our discoveries. And we hope to cooperate 
with the greater efficiently in the future, especially with our new partner, uh, two meter telescopes, because uh, we uh, discovered, we revealed that uh, in the past, in 2015, we had uh, an observation, followed up observation after our discovery of optical transient by made by this uh, telescope and uh, we hope that our our uh, willing to to be to be uh, uh, followed up uh, uh, by uh, more uh, more expensive instruments uh, would be heard and uh, as uh, we can see uh, we we thrust for spectral observations, but two meters telescopes also thrust for spectroscopic observations. Hope uh, it the dreams will come true. Um, first uh, uh, discoveries that uh, have been made on uh, Mexican side. Uh, we can outstand uh, three of them. Uh, first one is the first optical transient that uh, was uh, discovered 25 January, only uh, months after uh, we finished uh, all work. Uh, the second one is uh, the neutrino alert observation where we can uh, predict possible optical counterpart. And uh, the first, uh, and the, the same day, the first uh, GRB follow-up uh, observation uh, have happened. Uh, the first optical transient has uh, uh, has amplitude uh, more than uh, 5.6 uh, uh, magnitudes and uh, uh, was published as all transients uh, in astronomers telegrams and uh, uh, is certified by uh, TNS. Ice cube alert. We discovered a fade, faded blazar uh, that uh, this uh, dimming started 10 days before the neutrino. And uh, we assume that uh, this might be a source for this event. We published this also in Astronomer Telegrams and in G GCN. Here you can see uh, the coverage of uh, uh, ice cube alert error boxes coverage made by our observatories. You see different colors on the first picture uh, reflect uh, the frames taken from different uh, sites, different observatories. And uh, first uh, follow-up observation uh, of uh, uh, gamma ray burst have happened in fe February also. Uh, but it's not the only uh, Garbe follow-up observation that have been made uh, on new site, but unfortunately, until now, we have no new discoveries in uh, GRB uh, on this uh, made by this site. But we have a lot of uh, observation where uh, Mexican observatory take part in. And uh, uh, as we see on the first picture here, almost 30% uh, of all uh, GRB follow-up observations uh, a new site, new Mexican observatory have been taking part in almost 30% of all GRB observation this year. And on the second picture, on the right side of the slide, you can see that uh, in this, uh, in this 40%, uh, Mexico observatory uh, made first observations in 28% with 28% uh, frequency. Frequency. Uh, interesting that uh, the nearest uh, observatory is Amur uh, in Bulgarianska, Russia. Uh, it's 25 percent because they are very close to each other in ge geographically. Uh, it's uh, good results. So we can see that uh, uh, master obser uh, that uh, Mexican observatory can make a rapid reaction to uh, GRB events, but uh, it's not fantastic. It's uh, mostly uh, almost mostly the same like all our, our other observatories, and it's logical. Um, 
all observations, follow-up observations we made, we get from the sources shown on the first picture. Most, most of all, uh, most of them we get from Fermi, and it's uh, logical because uh, it has the broadest range of instruments with uh, from eight uh, kilo electron volt to 300 giga electron volt. Uh, but uh, the error boxes for all these events are very different, and uh, maybe it sounds strange that. Uh, that, that good observatory didn't uh, uh, make any discoveries in uh, in GRB uh, afterglow, but uh, it's not so it's not so easy uh, even for robots. I want to show some pictures to from uh, those follow-up observations to illustrate the complexity of uh, discoveries. For example, at this picture you can see uh, something that looks like clearly. Uh, as a discovery, because uh, you can see here on the uh, left uh, picture uh, the black the black uh, line is one sigma, and the green uh, line is two sigma uh, uh, area from Fermi. And uh, inside uh, the one sigma circle, you can see the frames made by different observatories with different colors. It's observatory from South Africa and from Mexico. And in the center of this picture, you can see something uh, that uh, robot uh, have found as a transient. So it's some new source. And you can uh, guess that this is, of course, a transient, but not. It's a red uh, variable. And most of transients that were discovered is uh, variable stars. Uh, and but uh, in another case, you can have something like this, a lot of hundreds, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, observations of different observatory. And there is, there is one, small, one small transient to all of these uh, observations. And it also variable star. Or this, uh, you can see three different transients, three already and uh, hundreds of uh, uh, frames, hundreds of observations by, made by four observatories. It's also variable. Uh, here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight transients. And uh, so, uh, uh, and it's, it happened with a relatively small error boxes, but we also get a very huge one, uh, like, like for example on this slide. So uh, uh, this area have been uh, 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 these different areas were uh, were uh, observed because of uh, uh, con uh, conditional of uh, uh, weather and coordinates. So uh, the, they these uh, uh, sites uh, are located in very different places. So. Uh, we even couldn't uh, get observation inside this circle, this uh, error box circle. Yeah, but uh, sometimes you are happy and you can find some interesting transient, even if it's not a gamma ray burst. For example, it might be possible supernova, like in this case, or even a real supernova, like uh, in this. Uh, like it's shown on this picture. And I want to mention that here we have also some huge uh, error box and uh, absolutely something uh, that uh, absolutely have no any uh, meaning, like it lo looks like to try to find here, but uh, uh, arbitrarily we have found here supernova. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, the list of uh, uh, follow-up uh, GRB transient, uh, follow-up uh, GRB observations that uh, uh, finished with the founding of some uh, transients, but uh, all of these transients are in GRB. Uh, most of them are variable stars or, or other uh, known variable sources. Uh, but uh, also we have uh, uh, one type uh, A, type 1A supernova and uh, possible supernovas. But they 
they discover it not by Mexican observatory, but Mex Mexican observatory just uh, take uh, taking part in a broad range of those uh, observations. To summarize uh, uh, the the result of these eight months of working, I want to outline these features. Uh, we can see that almost third of uh, transient have been discovered, so so we can uh, uh, state that uh, the site is very effective. We see proprietary, proprietary discoveries. It means that the location is very unique and very good. We see rapid reaction to new events, but uh, uh, not uh, but they didn't happen faster than on other observatories. We need uh, more uh, observation of our transients to larger telescopes, and we need more observatories in southern hemisphere. Uh, that's all. Thanks for your Thank attention. You Good talk. Any questions? Ah, Alexander Fyodorovich Zakharov. Where is my uh, uh, think, microphone? Thank you, Thank you very much. No, no, no. No. It was very, very interesting. On uh, I have a question about uh, probably efficiency of different components of this network. I mean, 28%, 25%. Yeah, yeah. Because you explain it like uh, black emissions and Mexico is are very close in the geographical sense. Yeah. But I'm not expert in ge geography, but it seems to me that black emissions is closer to, to, to Tunka. Yeah, according yeah. to my understanding. Yeah, Could yeah, of course. Uh, because it has to be explained. Why mm -hmm. is yeah, I forget. I forget to mention that. Uh, of course, uh, we also have here <laughs> selection, natural selection effect, because not all observatories work 100% uh, of times because of some malfunctions. So uh, I didn't try to show uh, to research this effect for uh, those observations. So uh, it's uh, possible that uh, uh, we can see this effect because uh, eight months is uh, long enough, but <laughs> sometimes uh, not long for uh, to uh, to to restore to restore <laughs> some equipment. No. I can to add that something that the Tunka uh, we have some problem with new telescope, uh, fully new telescope, the Master 600 millimeters, and uh, we have the ah in Tunka yes, but this new system, new photometers, and new uh, dome. Uh, moderate, uh, modernized dome, and we have the uh, we need the time for the uh, how repair. to say huh? repair, not repair, but uh, restore. Uh, yes, нет, это называется commission, commission job. Need the commission, and one of us after conference come to Tonka and. Uh, we know that the Tunka is a very good place, really, because Tunka and Blagovesinsk is a very, very same uh, in weather, in astronomical weather. But yeah. uh, this problem now we must to, как -то overcome. Mm -hmm. We shall overcome, and you see the Tunka is a bright telescope. That is only one. Uh, one. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Uh, then the the northern sky, uh, northern polar hemisphere, uh, the best uh, the best uh, site in Russia, the Tunka and Blagovesi, the best uh, the two hundred days a nights per per year each. For example, in Caucasus, one hundred. Two times less, but uh, of course Canarian Island is very good. Canarian three hundred nice per year, but this telescope now sleeping <laughs> moderately due to something. You know <laughs> what happened, and uh, but uh, this only one from the nine telescope which we have. 
okay, is, is uh, more question, more you want to something? No. Ah, you, <laughs> yeah, I see. You already come to the Tunka. Ah, no, to, to the. Can you go back to the point map about the. Yes. Are you sure it's the cryptic coordinates? No, no, that's not a uh, critic. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. swear it up. Yeah. Uh, that is still the twenty twelve. Yeah, good good remarks. Yeah. Sit down, yeah. please. <laughs> In Kuluar. Okay. <laughs> is there any another questions? Victor, have you any questions for the master? Well, uh, more than questions, uh, it's more a like congratulations. Oh, very good. <laughs> because very good. Of, very nice. of the yeah. amount of work that you have put into it, I've been seeing what you have been doing with the with the data and all the uh, and all the telegrams, and it's. I, you know, you know, we have some problem, but we still overcome all problems. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, the, the, and especially because there, there is a plan already to, to deal with it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Next question. Victor. Что? Как, а Виктор? No, no, Виктор Окнянский. Он у вас был? I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry, Victorio, that is the finish of this day. Yes or no? Really? Mamma mia. Okay, goodbye. I would like to see you tomorrow uh, at uh, around, around uh, I, I do not understand. We have the five o'clock after Meridium, we have, we have Concerto Grosso. Victor, you listen to oh, me? Yeah? Nice. Concerto Grosso, and translated in the uh, YouTube, and uh, maybe maybe in YouTube only, yes, not? It may be here, yes. And uh, I invite you, our Mexican friends come to this concerto, and after that, uh, we are uh, something have dinner conference. Unfortunately, not with you, <laughs> but I remember yeah, I mean, the night, the nice uh, dinner at the uh, Mexico Aeropuerto. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> In first time. Okay, uh, goodbye. Yeah, Thank really you very good. much. Finished. See you tomorrow. Bye. Выключай. Все, братцы, выносите тело. Жилетку покрасил. Жилетку, жилетку-то все покрасил, да. Ах, вы паразиты.